Hey guys, um, so it's 5.50 on Monday, I was going to say June, but it's not quite, um, May 20th, 2019, well, um, and I wanted to talk about what it is like having mental illness and being an actor. And the reason that I am bringing this up is because I just finished a show um, literally yesterday. Closing was yesterday. Um, I worked on an off-off Broadway show. We started, I auditioned for it like at the end of February. And by the end, I mean like literally like I think it was February 28th. And then we had all of our rehearsals and we opened on April 28th and we just finished our run yesterday and the reason I bring it up is because I ran into a couple and I can think of three specific instances where my mental health really took a toll on me um, and yeah I didn't like for those of you that watch my videos on the on the reg um I don't think I don't like plan out what I'm gonna say I don't like do that so um yeah so I'll just start with um uh, la, 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 la. so I have borderline personality disorder and I was having a really difficult time connecting with um, someone in my cast, um, I'm not going to say who, but I was having a very difficult time connecting with someone in my cast and I, a lot of my symptoms were coming out, a lot of, um, insecurity, uh, just in general and flip-flopping on whether or not this person hated me. Um, I was afraid that I was annoying them. It was a very confusing relationship too um, because they were kind of sending me mixed signals of having a professional relationship and also having um, like a friendly relationship. So it was kind of a bit of a blurred lines uh, situation which um, it should be one or the other but also in theater it should also yeah, it should be one or the other. And especially if it's a director-actor relationship, it should be, like, professional. So it was just a really confusing situation. But my bipolar um, symptoms really flared up and were really fucking me up for, like, a solid month where I just um, was really struggling. Um, all the time when I'm an actor... Uh, in the professional roles that I have done, my anxiety and my OCD um, like to just take over and get in the front seat and drive. Um, I become very obsessive about, I don't know, I have a very specific process of working when it comes to finding a character and doing research and stuff like that's the kind of stuff that I love doing that's the part of the work that I like doing I love like doing research and and um, exploring exploring character and stuff like that like that's the kind of stuff that I like to do um, but that can uh, kind of run over into obsession and definitely when I was playing Constantine in the seagull that was really unhealthy like when I was memorizing my lines that is a behemoth of a play y'all it's four it's four acts and Constantine um, is on stage almost the entire time he's only uh, a not in two scenes so party city um, so when I was memorizing my lines for that play, I was relentless with myself and I would not, I remember I wouldn't let myself eat, I wouldn't let myself drink water, it was like really sadistic what I was doing to myself, I lost a lot of weight, um, and I was just being really mean to myself, um, because I just, you know, I needed to memorize the lines and it needed to be perfect and blah blah blah. 
Um, and yeah, so it's really interesting because it's very easy to fall back into disordered eating habits, I realized when I'm in a show. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm so busy or what, what the hell, I don't know. I don't know, but I realize that's kind of a trend as well. Um, so, but back to pertaining to this show. So my BPD symptoms oh, happened. Then, um, I had a, I don't know what the hell happened yesterday. Basically what happened is someone had an epileptic seizure in the audience yesterday. Now I wasn't there like downstairs when it happened. I was like upstairs in the green room listening to music on my headphones. So I didn't, I didn't hear the scream. I didn't hear the fall. I didn't hear any of it, but everyone in the cast was really rattled. And, sorry, I thought it wasn't recording for a second. I was like, oh my God, no. Um, everyone was really rattled and we had to decide as a company, um, because this this is six separate plays and there's 11, um, there's 11 cast members. We had to decide as a company and as each individual, you know, six plays, whether or not we wanted to go on. And there were some people that were very like visibly shaken that had to leave the room because they were crying or whatever. And I don't know psychologically what happened to me, but I was kind of in this really weird dissociative state, but it wasn't like clear to me that I was dissociated. But the interesting thing about this is our show is specifically about mental health. So we actually had counselors at the show because our show is linked with the mega Instagram platform, Half the Story. So this, you know, traumatic event happens and like, why should it affect me? I don't have any connections with seizures or epilepsy or whatever, nothing to do with that. Um, but I just started feeling really weird and kind of just foggy and I'm very attuned to my body. I know when I'm dissociating, I know when I'm derealizing, I know when I'm depersonalized, like all those things I can tell. But I was like, I don't know if I should go on stage and do this performance because my biggest fear is that I was going to freeze up and forget all my lines or I was going to be afraid that I was going to go on stage and then just completely zone out and just be a robot and not be able to perform and give the audience what they paid for. That's what I was afraid of is that I was just going to go into like robot mode and not be able to emote at all and just talk like this. Um, so luckily a therapist was able to come up and talk to me, come upstairs and talk to me. And we talked for like 15 minutes and she luckily helped me realize like what my fears were and like, well, what are you most afraid of? Um, so that was really confusing. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk to my therapist about that because I don't know what happened to me. Um, and I did get asked a couple times by people like, well, what is it like being an actor with mental illness? Like, does that help you? Like, is it cathartic? Is it blah, blah, blah? And I realized I don't really have an answer to that question. Um, because you know, I think we have that cause I'm definitely an, an introvert. Um, like especially when it comes to, to being in casts of plays, I, uh, I usually play pretty dark roles actually where I need to, at least my process is, is that I draw away from people and I need like music is a really big way in for me to listen to music and just like be away from everyone and like sit in a corner and stretch and stuff like that. But people ask me like, well, is it like cathartic or whatever for you to be an actor? Because, like, you hear, you know, you see, like, Michelle Williams, who's just, like, this little, quiet, just, like, demure 
person or like Johnny Depp who's like this just like enigma of a human being and I don't look at myself as that way like I'm kind of outgoing but I also have really bad social anxiety so I don't know that acting I don't know it does give me a release but it's not that like stupid trope of like oh I get to be someone else that's not what acting is for me that's not why I act it's not that I get to be in someone else's shoes and escape that's not why. It's just the sense of feeling that I get when I'm on a stage because I'm, I do theater. Um, I haven't done much camera work. Um, we'll see what the future holds, you know, whatever. Can't, I can't tell my career, but, uh, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's why I'm an actor is because of the feeling that I get of being on stage and, and the, the energy that you get from an audience. So it's not that I want to escape. I'm not that little quiet person in the corner. And yet I am because if you see me on a show, like I don't talk to my castmates and I have a hard time connecting to people. So my mental illness does, that's another way that it does get in the way of being an actor because it's really hard to connect with my castmates, like my social anxiety gets in the way. Like I have a really difficult time talking to people. If I have a scene partner, um, I've only had to play uh, romantic interest twice. Um, and that was difficult and scary because I'm thinking in the back of my head, like what if this person hates me? And the, you know, the runs were very short um, one of them was only three days, but it was like a month of really intense preparation. But it's just, I don't know. I, so I guess if you were to ask me, does mental illness affect you when you're acting Rylan? I would sit back for a second and go, and then I would look back at you and I would say, yes, it does. <laughs> um, yeah, it totally does. Because just to recap, my social anxiety gets in the way that I interact with my castmates or rather don't interact because I'm scared too. Um, when we're in big groups, uh, if it's like an ensemble piece, uh, I just don't talk and I feel uncomfortable and I feel like if I have anything to say it's stupid so that's one way um, my OCD takes over in a number of ways whether or not it's memorizing lines or doing research or something like that disordered eating habits can show up in any instant that they want to um, what else? I mean, just like anxiety, period, the end. Um, and then panic attacks. I didn't even get into that because I don't want to tell that story, but I had a pretty bad panic attack before a show. And then dissociation. I dissociated twice before a show. Uh, because one, I was triggered because of something that happened. It was an anniversary of a, of a death. Um, and then I was like dissociated or whatever because of the, seemingly because of the seizure. So yeah, it's kind of scary. Uh, cause what happens when I'm on Broadway someday and I have these mental conditions that'll get in the way. therapy four times a week instead of two. I don't know. <laughs>